Let's go straight to the Heaster Automotive Group hotline. Thayer, Essex Thayer from Blogger So Dear. He reports on Wake Forest, all things Wake Forest. Currently driving back from Omaha. Essex, let's get right into it. Uh, Wake's first back-to-back -back losses this season came to LSU yesterday and the day before. What went wrong for this team the last couple of days? Yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me. And I think the first thing you have to look at for what went wrong, it has to be the bats didn't really travel for Wake Forest from Winston-Salem to Omaha. Uh, the order two through five really just couldn't get the bats going at all. And it continued into that last loss against Wake Forest, two through five. Lucas Costello, Brock Wilkin, Pierce Bennett, and Danny Corona did not register a single hit last mm -hmm. night against LSU. And, you know, that comes against a pitcher like Paul Skeens. That's something to be expected. But it just all throughout, even in those close wins, the bats really couldn't get going for Wake Forest. Well, to be able to turn the page here, Essex, as, as this Wake Forest team returns today to the accolades that it has and made the, the run through the ACC tournament, falling just short there, and then making this you know, hardcore run into the College World Series to Omaha, you know, the, the piece that everyone's going to go is, okay, what do we do after Rhett Lauder leaves the mound? Uh, we found that out, that there was you know, plenty, of, plenty of depth in that bullpen, so to speak, but what does this team look like next year in that same bullpen uh, when things shake up and we're all a year older and a year wiser? Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting page turner for Wake Forest going into next season. You're going to for sure lose Rhett Lauder. He's going to go in the first round in a month in the MLB draft, and you're likely also going to lose Sean Sullivan, Cam Manassi, and Seth Keener. And so, and Cole Rowland is also out of eligibility. So there are going to be a lot of question marks. You'll absolutely 100% have Josh Hartle back as he will slot in as the number one starter for Wake Forest. You'll have Michael Massey coming back, who I expect to also move from a bullpen role into a starter as a pitcher. But there's going to be a lot of room, you know, for the team to fill spots. And Tom, Tom Walter has proven he can do it through the transfer portal and through recruiting, and just as he did this past year, he, especially for pitching, is going to have to do that again. Essex Thayer joining us right now on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline. I'm Chris Lee. That is Paul Ihander, and you just spoke about that, the recruiting, the transfer portal. We saw how big uh, Tommy Tanks was for LSU last night, and he started off in Raleigh, started off with NC State, and he found a home in LSU, and we know that the SEC – uh, is is king when it comes to college baseball. As far as Wake Forest, this run that they've been on, do you think that uh, they've been advertised as a great baseball destination for some of these big time uh, transfers as, as a place for them to go and, and maybe even make a bigger name for themselves as opposed to where they were before? Absolutely. I mean, just starting off on the pitchers, Wake Forest, it's been talked about ad nauseum over this College World Series run. But the pitching lab that the program has established in Winston-Salem is top tier. It is It built Rhett Lauder into the pitcher that he is, mm. um, and it has certainly done so with the pitching staff. They had, you know, the best ERA in the country by almost an entire point. Um, so especially if you're a pitcher, Wake Forest might be the best destination in the country to build your career and, and build yourself into an MLB caliber player. There are talks about developing a similar hitting lab and having a coach like Bill Salento on the hitting side and Corey Muscara on the pitching side, this program is built for it not to be a one-hit wonder this year. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of pieces to fill through the transfer portal. They've already done it once. They've, uh, they're bringing in Seaver King, who's one of the best names on the transfer portal right now. Um, and he'll be in, uh, a middle infielder this year for Wake Forest, or this coming year for Wake Forest. You know, the opportunity is there, and I fully expect Tom Walter to retool and Wake Forest to be a a another very, very good team next season. Essex, really quick, just for those, because since we are in a triangle area and we're not exposed to Wake Forest as much, explain what the pitching lab is. I, I was leaving Winston-Salem kind of as the pitching lab uh, was getting the its final touches put on it, but what is, what is it? Uh, talk about what it uh, entails and, and how it is making uh, – these pitchers like Rhett Lauder so much better and turning them into huge MLB prospects. Yeah, it really gets down into the biomechanics of the pitchers, the motion, how their, their arm and hand works on every pitch. It basically develops them from a physical perspective 
into the perfect pitcher. So it really works on release, spin, and and approach just in general for a pitcher. So it really helps them outside of a, you know, a physical perspective, you know, focusing on getting a player stronger. It really works on, on the other side of physicality and making sure that you're making those perfect pitches, spotting them perfectly, having different release points, how your body works in those pitching motions. It really gets into the, the nuts and bolts of that. And Wake Forest has gone deep into the statistical side of the game, and, and it's worked for them. And, and the pitching lab has been a critical part of that development. Essex, we have an SEC football stronghold right now. The SEC has the stranglehold on football. How does the ACC keep the SEC from doing the same thing in baseball? How can the ACC get better overall to keep us from having yet another LSU, Florida, all SEC College World Series final? Well, I think it's a lot of just continuing what we saw this year. Um, You know, Wake Forest kind of proved that this can be done in the ACC, you know, developing, you know, internally through recruiting and the transfer portal externally, and also the investment that has been brought into the program. Athletic director John Curry has put a lot behind the baseball program, not only through support, um, you know, through the fan base, but also a financial, you know, backing of the program in developing that pitching lab, in working on developing a hitting lab, in working on the transfer portal. It, there needs to be a commitment from the members of the conference in a sport like baseball and not just focusing on football and basketball that saw the development of Wake Forest this year into a program that was one win away from the College World Series final two years ago. They didn't even make the ACC tournament, and a year ago they couldn't get out of a regional. And so this, you know, while it looks like it happened very, very quickly, this all built for a, for a very long time for Tom Walter's program into this year, all the, the backing and support that's culminated in this year. Other programs can look at Wake Forest and, and understand that it can be done. And if you look at that as a, a broader conference perspective, then I think, you know, it's not just going to be the SEC dominating baseball. It, it can, you know, it's been proven that it truly can be done at a school like Wake Forest. So it can be done anywhere. Give them a follow on Twitter, Essex Thayer 7. Thank you so much for joining us and safe travels heading back from Omaha. Thank you so much, Essex. Thank you. Right, Wake Forest uh, not getting it done. Paul, I thought it was going to get happen. I thought this was the year. I thought for the first time in 68 years – Wake Forest was going to get that College World Series, and it would have only been the third ACC College World Series win, uh, which is uh, incredible to think about. Yeah, it felt like there was enough pixie dust to go around, and then just ran into you know just ran into you know just the the bats got silent at the wrong time, and sometimes sometimes it just happens. But la- that last night's game, uh, a classic. I mean, if you're going to go down, you're going to go down that way on a walk off, and not on a, a a walk or a fielder's choice. So you know, yeah. take take that for what it is.